In this video, I'm going to discuss step one in the process of setting up your virtual computer in the cloud using Amazon Web Services. What you're looking at right now is the screen of my notebook computer, and I've already run the browser Google Chrome, which I'm going to use to navigate to Amazon Web Services. So the first part of this process involves setting up an Amazon Web Services account. To do so, you navigate to aws.amazon.com. So you can see what I've typed in. And go ahead and hit enter. And you will end up at the main entry page of the Amazon Web Services and there are always a lot of announcements and so on here but I did want to draw your attention over on the right here to a little box which is inviting you to uh, create a free account and use AWS for free and this is one of the really uh, nice things about AWS is that for a period of a year you can experiment with many of the services for free. So I did want to take just a moment to explore that. If you go to the link in this box that says view AWS free tier details and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and then do open link in a new tab. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to that new tab and you will start to see a description of the various services that um, you can use for free. I'm not going to go through this in great detail because of course you can do that and you can read what's written here but these free services are available to you for 12 months after you sign up which gives you a great deal of time to experiment and learn uh, how to use them before you end up paying for them. The main service that we're going to be using is Amazon EC2, which is what we'll use to create the virtual computers, which Amazon calls instances. And you can see here that you get 750 hours per month of usage of a Windows computer that they call a T2 micro instance, and you'll understand that more uh, later. But 750 hours of use for free per month. If you do want to know more about EC2, you can go ahead and click on this Learn More link. And you'll find out, among other things, that the EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Uh, it's really the basic place where you can create virtual machines. Uh, and there's a lot of description about that. As I say, I'm not going to go ahead and, and read this to you, but um, it's well worth spending a little time sort of playing around with the information that is here. But for now, we're going to focus on getting your Amazon Web Services account set up. So I'm going to go ahead and close this tab, and we're back at the, the start screen, uh, the starting web page of the Amazon Web Services, uh, where we had landed just a moment ago. So what you're going to do next is click on the sign up tab here and go ahead and set up your Amazon Web Services account. This is a perfectly straightforward process. I don't think you'll have any difficulty with it. There are two things I want to tell you about in advance. The first is that you have to have a credit card in order to set up the account. Even though the services are free, you do need this credit card in case you use some services that aren't free and, and so on. Uh, so the credit card is required. The other thing is that Amazon Web Services wants to make sure that you are an actual human being signing up, not a robot. As a result, you will need to be near a telephone because the setup process includes a callback uh, with a code number that you'll have to enter in order to complete setting up the account. So go ahead and pause this video, click on the Sign Up tab, create your Amazon Web Services account. And when you comp have completed that process, come back here and I'll show you a little bit more about setting up the account. So I'm assuming now that you have successfully set up your Amazon Web Services account. 
and you're either logged in or you are uh, back at the home uh, web page at aws.amazon.com. So I am not yet logged in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to log in by clicking on the My Account slash Console drop-down menu and then selecting the first item, the AWS Management Console. And I will get a screen for inputting my credentials. So I'll put in my email address. And then my password. And I'll click the sign in button. And when I'm signed in, I will be presented with a page that shows links to all of the services that Amazon Web Services provides. Now, as I'd indicated earlier, we're going to be focused on this service EC2 here for a while. Uh, but there are a couple of things that I wanted to uh, point out to you before we actually start setting up a virtual computer uh, in the next video. The first is that Amazon Web Services operates within regions. So if you look at this drop-down menu over here that says uh, North Virginia, it may say something different in, uh, in your case. Uh, if you click on that, you'll see all of the regions, all of the essentially the locations of these data centers uh, that you can select. Now, your performance is going to be best if you select one that's near you. Um, so I'm selecting US East, which is in uh, Northern Virginia. In general, applications, the, the services that Amazon provides, are designed to work within a region, to communicate with each other within a region. You don't want to end up sending data across regions. But anyway, at this point, just pick the region that corresponds to, uh, to where you are and then stick with it. One of the things that concerned me a lot when I began to use uh, AWS was the fear that I would uh, end up with a, a huge bill that I'd have to pay because I accidentally used a service or didn't understand something. So the next thing I want to show you is how to set up billing alerts that will tell you if anything is, is getting out of control with respect to uh, any kind of spending of money. So to do that, go to this drop-down menu and click on your name, and then select Billing and Cost Management. And this will bring up a screen that summarizes your current bill. Now I, of course, have been using Amazon Web Services for a while now, and you can see that my current month-to-date spend is $5.76. In order to set up a billing uh, alert, go to this uh, uh, list of links on the left-hand side and click Preferences. And then make sure that the checkbox by Receive Billing Alerts is checked. And then you can go down to this link that says Manage Billing Alerts and click on that. And you'll get a, a screen uh, here that uh, says under alarm summary you do not have any alarms created because yeah, you haven't done this yet. And then down at the bottom here there is a, a link in blue that says create a billing alarm. And this is a very simple quick way to create the kind of billing alarm I think that you want. So go ahead and click on that. And now you can just go ahead and fill this in. You uh, can put in the uh, dollar amount where you want to be notified. So I want to be notified if my monthly spend is going above $50. And then it's probably filled in already uh, your name here. Uh, as you can see it's it's got me listed here as George and then shows my email address. Uh, if that's not the case that that's been automatically filled in for you, you'll need to create a new list. But I'm now all set up if I click Create Alarm to be notified by email at my Emory email address anytime my monthly spend uh, goes above $50. So I'm just going to go ahead and create that alarm. And it will show you down here in this picture um, that, that the current spend here, which is in blue, is nowhere near my limit of, of $50. So now I am protected against 
uh, any kind of, of inadvertent spend that adds up to any kind of significant amount. So uh, I'm now done with this video. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you actually how to uh, create an instance.